Titrimetry or titration method is a technique of quantitative chemical analysis used to identify the concentration of an analyte. It is done by preparing a standardized titrant and then gradually adding them to the said analyte. Various indicators can be used in the process. Titration was derived from the Latin word titulus and the French word titre, which means title or rank, and which is also why it is denoted as a determination of rank of a solution with respect to pure water with a pH of 7. Titration has four major types, the acid-base titration, redox titration, precipitation titration, and the complex symmetric titration. In the acid-base titration, we can either use direct titration or indirect titration. Indirect titration, also known as back titration, is the use of an excess volume of a reagent with a known concentration to titrate an analyte. What sets apart back titration to the common direct titration is that it can be used substances that are insoluble with water and to weak acids and bases. Aspirin or acetyl salicylic acid is known for mediating mild to moderate fever and other inflammations. Being a monoprotic weak acid that is only slightly soluble to water, we use back titration to know its amount per tablet. The laboratory apparatus such as beaker, burette clamp, burette, hot plate, pipette, dropper, Erlenmeyer flasks, graduated cylinder, iron stand, spatula, steering rod, mortar and pestle, wash bottle, wash glass, weighing paper, and volumetric flask, and analytical balance was provided by the laboratory in Central Sun State University. The penoctaline, aspirin, ethanol, 0.1 normal HCl, and 0.1 normal Sodium hydroxide was used as our agent in this experiment. Six aspirin tablets were accurately weighed using the analytical balance and pulverized using mortar and pestle and obtained 2.0 grams tablet powder. The powder tablet was accurately weighed to the nearest 0.5 grams and placed into three labeled 250 ml Erlenmeyer flasks and each flask was added with 20 ml of ethanol and three drops of penoptilin indicator and swirled gradually. Titration of aspirin with 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide. The burette was filled with standardized 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide solution and the initial volume was recorded. The first aspirin sample was titrated with sodium hydroxide to its permanent cloudy pink color and the volume of sodium hydroxide delivered was calculated. Another set of a calculated volume of sodium hydroxide with additional 10 ml was delivered to the same flask of the first aspirin sample and the initial volume of the titrant was recorded. The total volume of the titrant delivered was recorded and calculated. The same process was re repeated to the two remaining replicates. Heating the reaction to completion. The flask containing the aspirin sample was heated on the hot plate to speed up the hydrolysis reaction and swirled frequently but not reaching its boiling point. After 15 minutes, the flasks were removed from the hot plate and cooled for 5 minutes. Back titration with 0.1 normal hydrogen chloride. The clean burette was filled with a standardized 0.1 normal hydrogen chloride solution and recorded the initial volume. The first flask with aspirin sample was titrated until the cloudy pink color disappeared and recorded the final volume. The same process was repeated with the two remaining replicates. Data gathering. The mass of the sample aspirin was recorded per replicate. The volume of sodium hydroxide and hydrogen chloride delivered was recorded per replicate. Compared the calculated results of aspirin with that claimed by the manufacturer. The average mass of the aspirin tablet was computed averaging the mass of the tablet computed for each replicate. The following formulas were used. For milligrams aspirin per tablet, it is equal to milligram of aspirin per replicate or the average mass of one tablet divided by milligram of sample per replicate. Where the milligram of aspirin per replicate is equal to millimoles of sodium hydroxide the molar mass of aspirin divided by 2. Where the millimoles of sodium hydroxide is equal to ml of sodium hydroxide or the molarity of sodium hydroxide minus the ml of hydrogen chloride the molarity of the hydrogen chloride so for the results in discussion we are to determine the amount of aspirin per tablet the data we gather here are the weight of sample the volume of sodium hydroxide delivered and the volume of hydrochloric acid delivered so for replicate one we have your 0 0.505 grams of sample for replicate two we have your 0 0.5042 grams of sample and for replicate 3, we have your 0.5046 grams of sample. For your volume of NaOH delivered, we have your 18.70 ml. 
18.30 ml and 18.65 ml for replicate 1, 2, and 3 respectively. Volume of HCl, we have here 3 ml, 2.85 ml for replicate 2, and 3.20 ml for replicate 3. With this data, we can compute now for the millimoles of NaOH and the amount of aspirin present per replicate, which will be needed in computing for the amount of aspirin present per tablet. So here are the calculated values we got, we obtained upon calculation. So before we dig in further here, I have to first show you how this data were obtained. So for replicate 1, the data that we are going to use are the weight of sample, the volume of NaOH delivered, the volume of HCl delivered, the molarity of the NaOH used and the molarity of the HCl used. So to compute for the amount of aspirin tablet, we need to first compute for the amount of the millimoles of NaOH. So the formula for the computation of millimoles of NaOH is by subtracting the product of the amount of NaOH delivered to the molarity of NaOH to the amount of HCl delivered to the molarity of HCl. Substituting all the data that we have here to the given formula, we now have 0.0187 liters multiplied by 0.1008 molar minus 0.003 liter HCl over 0.1003 molar of HCl. So if you can see here, the, mula, the, the amount of volume or the volume of the ADA, NaOH and the HCl delivered were in liters because the molarity is also equivalent to moles per liter. So to get the moles, we have to cancel that liter unit. So we have to convert first the ml to liters. So now we have, upon computation, now we have minimals of NaOH for replicate 1, which is equivalent to 1.584 minimals. After computing for the minimals of NaOH, we are now going to compute for the amount of aspirin per replicate in milligrams. So the data we're going to use here is the minimals of NaOH that we get from the first computation and the molar mass of aspirin, which is equal to 180.16 grams per mole. So the formula in getting the amount of aspirin per left replicate is equal to the minimals of NaOH multiplied by the molar mass of the aspirin divided by 2. Substituting all the data that we have, we now have 1.584 millimoles multiplied by 180.16 grams per mole and then we have here the conversion factor which will serve as a conversion so that we can convert the value into mole and then cancel it with the given molar mass which is gram per mole. So we'll have we'll end with grams which is equivalent to 0 0.1427 grams of aspirin. Then convert it again with 1000 mg per 1 gram. So now we have 142.7 milligrams of aspirin per replicate. After that, we are now going to compute for the amount of aspirin per tablet. So here we're going to use the amount of aspirin per replicate that we computed a while ago, the average mass of one tablet, which is equal to 0 0.27465 milligrams, and the amount of sample per replicate, which is equal to 505 milligrams. So we just converted this so that every, everything in the data will be in milligrams. So the formula for computing for the milligrams of the aspirin per, per tablet is equal to milligram of aspirin per replicate multiplied by the average mass of one tablet divided by the sample of the replicate in milligrams. So now, diba, computing with this one and convert uh, multiplying it to the conversion factor, which is 1,000 milligrams is equal to one gram, we now have the milligram of aspirin per tablet, which is equal to 77.61 milligrams. So for replicate 2, the same process that we did in replicate 1, we now compute for the minimals of NaOH and we come up with the value of 1.559 minimals. So yun na yung value ng minimals of NaOH natin. And computing for the amount of aspirin per replicate, on the other hand, we get 140.4 milligrams of milligram, milligrams of aspirin per replicate for replicate 2. And computing for the amount of aspirin per tablet, we now get 76.48 milligrams for replicate 2. For replicate 3, the same process like the other two, we now have the value of minimals of NaOH, which is 1.559 millimoles also. And for the amount of aspirin per replicate, we also we will obtain here 140.4 milligrams per replicate or per, per replicate too. So the amount of aspirin per tablet now, since we have a different amount of sample, 
weight of sample of certain weight na to, which is 504.6, the value now of our aspirin per tablet will become 76.42 milligrams. So these are the values that are obtained from the computation on the determination of the amount of aspirin present per tablet. So if you can observe here, as the amount of the moles of NaOH delivered actually increases, the amount of aspirin per tablet also increases. So in replicate one, from our data previously, we have here the highest amount of NaOH delivered. And now we, if you can see here in the table, we now have replicate one with the highest amount of aspirin per tablet, which is 77.61. So for the second part of our results, we compared the amount of aspirin per tablet obtained from the experiment to the standard value claimed by the manufacturer. We obtained the amount of aspirin per tablet from each of the three replicates and averaged them. This value is the one we compared to the standard value. As presented, the average amount of aspirin we computed is 76.84 mg, while the standard value is 80 mg. This is our computation. We just used the average formula. So we divided the summation of aspirin amount per tablet of each replicate to the total number of replicates, which is 3. To further compare the computed value to the standard, we used ways of expressing accuracy by computing for the percent relative error and percent accuracy. The percent relative error was determined to be 3.95% and consequently, the accuracy is a 96.05%. So, we used the percent RE and percent accuracy formula. Percent RE is equal to the quotient of the absolute value and the standard value multiplied to 100. And the absolute value is equal to the difference of the measured and the standard value, which is 3.16 mg, while the standard, as mentioned earlier, is 80 mg. Employing the necessary operations, we obtained relative error of 3.25. And the percent accuracy is simply determined by subtracting the percent RE to 100% accuracy, giving us 96.05% accuracy. These values will be further discussed in the conclusion, including its implications. To conclude our experiment on the determination of aspirin using back titration, we can say that back titration or indirect titration still follows some basic principles of direct titration. However, its most notable difference is the use of an excess amount of reagent in the titration process. Back titration remains advantageous over direct titration when dealing with substances that are impure or are insoluble with water. It can also easily identify the endpoint of a weak base or weak acid. 3.95% error is present in the results. This might came from the moisture that is present in the instrument's use or in the sample itself. Nevertheless, 3.95% is still within the permissible range of percent error in an analytical experiment, which means that the result of this experiment is of high accuracy.